Hey guys, in this video we'll create a beautiful Instagram Chrome. You won't find anything like this on YouTube. Here we can hover and see the stats. You can click the post, go to this little gear icon. So upload images. Let me add some, share that. So go to the post, make comments on the posts. This is responsive, so you can go to mobile version, go to this other edit profile section, we can save. This stories component here is also functional. Follow people here on the suggestions box. You can sign out, log in. So it's a pretty complete project. So in this video, we'll finish the Instagram clone tutorial. So make sure to watch the previous video if you haven't. And let's get started. Okay, so now we will add React Router so we can link all the different pages in the app. So we can use this command here, npm star React Router DOM uh, version 6, which is I think la the latest one at this point. This is done, we can continue with this installation. So basically we need to add this code to the index. So let's open up our index.js. Here we will import the browser router component and we will wrap the app with that component here. And now we should go to the app.js and here we need to import some different components. So let's import that here. Uh, we actually don't need link, just the routes and route. And here we create the, we add the routes, wrapping up all the components, and we start to create the different routes. So the first one will be for the home page. So this would be route. Um, Here we will have a path for a slash, which is the home page. Uh, we want to make this exact so it doesn't match other routes, other URLs with something else in the in the in the path. And when we get to this route, we want to uh, to load this component. And it will be basically the home page component. But I will create a fragment because I will add the the navbar and the home. So this will be like this. And this will load the navbar and the home page component. And let's create another route for the profile page. Or now I will hard code this to my username and we will have here the profile. Let's delete these lines and that should be it for the, for the routes. So now we can add links to the navbar. So let's add a link to the home page when you click on the home icon. Um, link, let's import the link here. It should be link to slash. And here we close that tag. So now the the this this logo this is the main logo sorry uh, the Instagram logo will link to the home page. Uh, we I, we wanna do the same for the 
house icon. So we just can just copy the same code here and delete the previous anchor tag. So this should be a link to the home page. And I think, yeah, we have the uh, the profile image should link to the profile. So let's add that link here and delete this anchor tag. So now we should have links for the home page and the uh, the profile page. So let's check that out. Okay, this links to the profile and this links to the home page. So it seems to be working fine. So next let's work on the models. Um, for the models we will use uh, two components. Actually for uh, for the models and for the menu, this menu um, here is one of these headless UI components. So these give you basically the all the structure for you for creating the these components and it basically works pretty well with Tailwind CSS. So this is a good um, a good project to use with Tailwind. Uh, we will use the menu and the dialogue components in this project. So uh, let's start with the menu. So it will be something like this. So first let's install uh, the component. The library. Okay, once this is done, we have an, an example here. And yeah, there are basically some different examples. We will use a transition. So let's open up the profile page. Sorry, the navbar. Oh, this is the navbar. Um, the menu will be here when in the profile image. Should open the drop down menu here. So we can use this code right here um, for as a base for our menu. Uh, so the bottom here will be actually the image. Um, we'll use a transition for the animation for the drop down. So we, we can use the same uh, transition effect. Um, we can start adding now the items here. So let's me let me delete this. In this menu we'll have a link to the profile. So let's actually copy this here. This will be a link to the profile. And it will have a font awesome icon. And it will be the the user icon. Let's add some margin to the right. And it will say profile. And in the two, in this link, we need to add some class classes here to style it. So, um, okay. So for now, let's leave it like that. We need to add something for when you hover the the link, because uh, 
we want to have some kind of different styling so let me actually save this like we have it right now uh, i need to import menu and transition import menu and transition uh, for now some is there and link is there okay so let me check something here menu is not defined but I'm ready save that file let me see okay I didn't save it okay so it doesn't look really good we need to add some styling here but it's kind of working so let's go back to the browser and we need to style this uh, differently so the button so this menu I will render this as a div and I want to have some classes here uh, this will be relative so I can absolute position the the icon the profile icon image sorry the profile image uh, this will be online block and I will align uh, the text to the left uh, this will be uh, let's add some classes to this element uh, class name this will be inline block uh, width will be 8 height will be 8 Justify center, so it's horizontally center. Um, the image inside this component, this element. Uh, background will be white. Let's make the text small. Font size medium. And we want the text to be gray. 700 okay this will remain the same with the image uh, let's make this uh, fragment so it basically doesn't take uh, create an element in the DOM and the items will have some different classes okay class name um, I will absolute position the, it the items origin top right with basically um, makes a, a change to the to the animation so it goes from top to right uh, the position will be right zero so it's close to the right uh, margin top will be two i will add a little add the, a width of 56 should be rounded the corners uh, shadow should be LG this one um, background will be white ring will be one um, this is uh, is something related to the shadow. I don't remember actually, but it's some kind of 
um, little change to the shadow and ring will be black it's for the opacity of the ring opacity 5 focus uh, outline none so we don't have the uh, browser blue border when we focus on the element and this will be for the dividers the little lines between the elements we will make it uh, gray 100 okay and next we want to have a little div here this is for the dividers so we, we will divide um, a group of components the ones uh, here these three here will be divided by this line here so let's wrap all these items in this div just adding a little pattern at the top and the bottom and here we close that tag but we actually need to add more links here but let's see what we have right now our fragment is not defined okay so fragment should come from react so let me copy this line here and that should work now so we can see now the the item is showing up but we still have to make some changes here to the styling and i think we need to style the item let me see forgot no basically we need to style the link but before we do that um, we want to have something here so here we can add some basic styling this will be a block uh, we'll have some padding left and right four and top and bottom of two the text will be a small and we want to make uh, the text gray 700 and let's see how it looks now yeah it looks just like we have on the final uh, code but there's something else we need to add here and is that um, the, this effect when you hover we don't have that here so to do that we have to use uh, the active uh, variable that is passed by the component so let's add that here this will be a little string literal so when it's active we want to add some classes uh, this one will be the background will be gray and the text will be gray and when it's not active uh, we want to have uh, just the text will be gray just like here Like this and let me see but there's something else we need to have these same classes on both cases so let me add that here for now 
active is not defined. Uh, let me see what. I, oh, I didn't pass it here. So what I need to do now is to create a a function, an anonymous, an anonymous function, and we can pass that active uh, variable like that to this element, and here is where we have the element. Okay. I think it's working now. Right, it's working. But to, to avoid repeating this code here, we can create a new function, a little, a little uh, helper function here. This will be, uh, we call these class names. And here we will pass all the different classes and we will return basically a merge of all the classes like this with a space okay so we'll get we'll basically this dx structure all the different class names uh, and we loop through that and basically this will pass everything and just join that with a little space so all the classes will have uh, a space between them uh, okay let me see let me see oh, this is classes the name of the variable is classes and now we can use that here so let me go to the code so when class class names is true yeah so when we can remove this code here from block and just have uh, these ones like this this will be text gray 700 and let's see Yeah, so we, the first option will basically do the, the check if it's active and we'll pass uh, either this group of class names or this group of class names. But we'll always have all this group of class names, so we'll merge this with either this or this. Okay, so it doesn't look easy to read, but... Uh, I guess we, it's not really necessary to have this. We can duplicate these class names here. But anyway, I think it's easier to maintain, I guess. If you want to change something here, you need to do it twice or you can forgot to update one of the of the group of classes. Uh, but yeah, okay, we got the same hover effect. So now let's add some more items. So let's actually copy all this code from here. And we have uh, in that menu, we have the save link. Here it will be called save for the save post. And this will be a bookmark icon and it will basically uh, we won't create this page so we probably just can link to the profile page for now so let's leave it like that and create another one for uh, for the settings 
and this will be a gear icon and the last one will be the logout link and this will be wrapped in a, another tip so it's separated from the others and this will link to uh, to the home page for now because we don't have a, a logout action at the moment and for this we want to use any icon so we can leave it like that let's see this looks good so yeah we have the profile the save the settings and the logout and for now they will just link to the home page okay so now we can start working on the models so these models here one for the uh, these actions the settings here uh, we'll have another for adding posts and uh, I think there was another one let me see uh, yeah this one here for uh, some actions on the post so let's create uh, our model so let's add a new component components at model js so open that file generate a new component we call model and for this component we'll use the dialog model component from headlets ui react so here are some examples we will use one with the uh, transition and we will use this example for um, the documentation page this one here because we'll have a backdrop and this will have a little animation it will basically transition the uh, opacity will be um, let me actually see, show that here so it's very subtle but you can see the backdrop basically gets a little uh, gray shade so let's use that one so let's copy this code oops from here to here and let's return that in this component okay Spend some time to for prettier to format the code um okay we can actually delete these comments here and we can pass some props here and we will destructure those props one one of the props will be to open uh, the, the model another the function to modify that variable and we will assign props here so show will be open to so show as a fragment and we want to have this as a div and add some some class names let's add some class names um, so this will be fixed um we have some c index so it's basically 
on top of the content in the page. We'll make this a uh, flex element and center everything inside that. So this is, will be basically the backdrop um, div. And we'll justify the content in the center. So the center of the uh, of the model is, is center, the little square is at zero, so everything is zero, top right, bottom left, and um, want to make this scrollable in case the um, the window the the content expands. Uh, here we can pass the set open on close. So let me actually, actually let's set open to false. No, but we actually want to pass the set open here, the function. Okay, so what else? We have our transition dialog. Okay, so this class right here, this div is basically the the overlay that we want to animate with this transition dot child. So uh, I will change this uh, from the example, but the just the colors. Uh, this will be like a little. Um, I think it's some kind of gray and the opacity will be 80, 95 and transition the opacity for the animation so let me see so it will go from 0 to 100 at this um, duration and leave uh, changing the opacity okay so let's leave it like that i actually have something different in the final code but let's see if this works uh, we have a little anchor here for the the close icon a little close icon to the uh, to, to the top right of the screen so this will be absolute right sixth top four text will be white and we want to make this text a little big so set that font awesome icon uh, this is not what I wanted so let me see. Font asm icon the function. Uh, let's do that manually. Font asm icon. Oh, I guess I have to import that. For import font asm icon. Font awesome icon, and this will be just a little X, just a character, and just do it like that. Okay, transition fragment that looks good. Here it will be the content. So let's, let's let's style that content here. This will be a flex container. We will center items as always, vertically and horizontally. Bra background will be white. Overflow hidden, so we don't got we don't have content. Um, 
overflow hidden content outside the element shadow xl transform this is, this is for the animation so transition everything and the alignment will be the middle small and a small screens you want to make it like span full width okay so here we actually want to have some classes based on different properties for example uh, one for the one will be based on the title so let me create let me change this to a string literal here and if we have a title we want to add some padding to the top to add some spacing and the other one is if we have um, um, some uh, we want to if we have the size prop we want to change the classes here so let me add that function that we'll create in a moment based on the size prop okay so we add that and let's create that function here and in that function we have a function a variable called utilities this is where we add all the different classes so we create a switch based on the size in case this prop is uh, extra small we want to have these classes uh, should be the height uh, should fit the content in the after the small breakpoint we want to make the mass with medium size and rounded LG break this case uh, if the size is large we want to have uh, the height will be uh, 5 6 and the max height will be 52 rems so I will use this um, these uh, brackets here so we can actually pass a, a value here different than the ones we have on the default um, tailwind utility class and index after a small breakpoint we want to make this max, max width 6 uh, extra large so it's a bit bigger in, in in white in width excuse me rounded L none so we don't have any borders on that and we wanna break here and the last one is the default in that case we want to have four feet here a small, after a small breakpoint we want to make this mask max width full screen rounded LG break here and return utilities 
Now we have our little helper class here for the different sizes. So again, this is based on just testing different sizes. So just we was just trial and error, changing these values. So it's just little um, nice touch for the model. So it basically looks good on different on different sizes. Okay. So if we have a title, let's add some code here. If we have a title, we want to show um, a div absolute top zero with full text center border b bottom border button uh, padding y2 font semi bold inside this div is where we want to have the the content of the title so actually this will go here and this goes here and inside this we have the title okay so this is basically to make the title at the top of the page center in case we have one um, to make it look uh, similar to to the one in Instagram and inside this panel is when we have the the content of the model so it will come from the from the other component that will will uh, use the model so uh, this is um, full width and full height and just print the props uh, the children alright I think that's it for this base model component uh, we actually have some more props here. The title, the size, we come as a prop. Uh, there's another variable that we will use for sharing the post. And if the file is dropped. But for now, we just add that here. But for now, this, will, this won't be used. But let me actually add that share link here. If below the title, if the share variable is present, we want to check if the file is dropped. And if that's true, we add an anchor tag, absolute position, write five, and the text will be a sky that blue, and here you will say share, and on click, this will basically. Uh, post the, the 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 image the post so this is a function to share so for now this I will I won't implement this part right now but I want to make sure that I forget so to add it so okay so now we can create uh, our first model the one for the settings it will be here it will be a global 
component so let's add it to the app so here let's create the actual component so let's add that here and let's create a new one oops and this will be called modal settings dot js will be modal settings and in here we will import the model we just created you see this works no it doesn't so we will import that model it's on the same level so we can use the dot slash inside this we will add some links so let's use the model we will pass the props here uh, the structure this will be a small model let's close this up and it will basically be a list of um, elements so we can use a ul and let me add some class classes here this will be this will take the full width of the element and the text will be a small and we want to have an anchor link here with some class names border button the little line below the element text should be center some padding top and bottom and this should be a block element and the first action will be change password uh, okay let me see that works so let's add that to this um, this component the global app component model settings let me see if i can import this here from components model settings okay and here we will have model settings and we want to have some state variable here so let's add that import use state from react and we want to have some state variable to know when the model is open or closed Big settings model open set its settings model open and use stay will be false so it will be closed by default and inside this we want to pass the props so open will be its settings model open and the function will be set its settings model open okay so that should be it but we want to have something that opens the model so on the profile page 
you want to pass the f set is set is settings moral open function um, function so we can actually use that in the profile page and I think we want to have it on the on the header so I will pass down that particular prop we can use context but uh, to make this simpler uh, I will just pass it down okay this will be let's actually use the function here set this more open profile header let's open up the profile header and here is the the icon so click you want to call set it set is moral open and make that true let me see if I'm not missing anything props is not defined in moral settings uh, okay uh props is not defined because i didn't pass it here and in the profile header set is set is more open is not defined of course because i didn't pass it here okay but it seems to be open by default uh, because I'm calling that here so this should be a function or basically the function will be immediately called okay that looks better and I think we want to have the cursor pointer so it looks better yeah change password should work this x should work so notice that when we open the model the focus goes to the x so we can enter and yeah we can we can, if we click on the overlay you close the model so yeah it's basically a very functional also the library the dialog model headless ui gives you all the different area settings for accessibility and all the stuff Alrighty. so now let's add some more items to this list so it looks a little better So here we can have a name tag option. And this will be apps and websites. This one will be notifications. Edit profile. Uh, report a problem and log out and the last one will be cancel so when we click on this one
we want to close the model so let's use uh, props passing the props to the model okay so we can use props dot um, set open to false okay so let me see if that works uh, it works but again we want to have the course and pointer So we get the little hand. Okay, it looks better. Okay, so now let's create the modal post um, actions, which is very similar to this one. So let's open that components. Uh, and modal post actions dot js in that uh, I guess we can I think we can copy this reuse some of this code this will be called modal post actions size will be small and this is similar just that this will be red red 600 uh, border and this will say report and the other one We'll say unfollow text red six hundred and the next one will say go to post and the last one will be cancelled and it will use the same classes as the action at the settings so um, now let's open up the post component and let's import the so default import module so let's use this and let's add that to the top of the component model post actions and let me see this will have a open prop is post modal open and we will have another to open the function to open the model set post modal open and here we will pass the post but since we don't have like the object at uh, the moment we won't pass that and the current user id so let's leave it like that so let's pass these props here and destructure that so we need here is uh, oh actually Let's create the state variables. This model 
Spasmo dal open set is post modal server set suppose modal opened this is state false here is have a typo here set is post modal open okay um so this should add a state for that variable and I have an error okay because I need to add a fragment here because I to I have two components side by side okay um, post model actions and we want to open that when we click on the icon on which one on the three dots i don't remember if i added that user state is not defined okay i need to add that here use state from react okay and uh, let me see in the home page oh i didn't add uh, the the three dots here so let's do that so I actually made a mistake. This is not exposed model open. I want to change this to uh, is model open. Is model open. Uh, okay, it doesn't let me do that. So let's use search and replace is modal open and this one will be set modal open because in this page we have two models one for the actions and another to show the the post in a model so uh, just to make easier to identify these variables uh, is more on open okay so now let's add a link here first let's add a div uh, as a container and here we have an anchor tag and this will open the the model so this will be set model open to true and this anchor tag will be a font awesome icon make this right font as some icon and should be an ellipsis icon so let's check this sound I'm getting this linter warning here but I don't think that's correct or maybe it is oh it's been rec already clear have this duplicate here okay so now we have the ellipses and oops something happened 
me refresh. Okay, so for some reason it wasn't working fine. But we can see now it's opening the model and we can cancel this. To close it, so it's working fine now. Okay, so the last model we will create is the one for opening the post. So this is used when you click on the comment icon or if you are on the home on the profile page and you click on the one of the posts. All right, so so let's create a new component. Uh, this one will be called um, Molar uh, Post. Let's open this. I think we can actually copy some things from the other models. So let me use that as a base. This will be model post. And you this one won't be small, this one will be large. And we are going to pass some different props here. So let's start with the with the props. Let's see structure. Some props here. Uh, we will get the pose, but since we don't have data right now, let's just add the open, set open, and just that because we don't have a user ID so far. So let's use that. And here we pass the the open and set open prop all right and let's actually delete this and this model we have a, a wrapper that will be a flex container so this will be flex row it will be full and inside this wrapper we'll have two dips uh, one at the left for the the image and at the right uh, we'll have the the different comments and some data from the post so let's create the first dip will be uh, with uh, three feet oops I forgot that I can use this sort of utility class i have to have that manually and here we will have the image of the post so right now i guess i can use the same one oh no not this one okay maybe the other one yeah Let's use this one um, and the right column will use the remaining space so this would be to let's actually autocomplete that now and manually add that this will be relative because we want an absolute position the inside element and that will be the top bar so this will be absolute um, top zero with full padding three of the directions this will be a flex container with a border at the bottom 
and inside this we will have um, basically two, uh, two things some user information and the ellipses as on the other on the post so we can make this a uh, flex one and inside this we have an anchor tag and we have an image rounded full with eight mass with none in line and I think I can just copy this let me see it's pretty similar to this one so let me actually copy that I can copy all this I believe it's the same code I think so this will be the the image I think I have this max width to none and that's the only difference the ellipses will be there uh, but I will not open this won't open anything Uh, an expected token Y. Let's see, line seven. Oops, forgot this. Okay, so I think this could be just the icon should not be clickable um, what else uh, next we want to have some should be inside the, this div we have another div overflow scroll so it's a scrollable, height will be full, padding bottom 48, and inside this div, have a flex container, flex row, padding 3, and another div, I have two divs here. Uh, one for the image of the user and let me add the class it says here it should be rounded for I mean case okay, I can use this one it's the same thing the user and next to that is the some more information from the user so here we have another wrapper class name three text as small and this will be a span div font size medium margin right two and this will have again the username and below that the caption of the post so let me see if I can just copy this and let 
let's actually import that now so here we will have import modal post and we want to have some state here so let's use state is post modal open this will be false and we want to add another one here open will be is modal is post modal open set is post modal open let's close this up oops forgot to curly braces here and see I forgot something I think this is fine now we can add the the link here so click want to open the model set dispose model open to true let's check that out in the browser i forgot to import from awesome somewhere probably here so import from awesome and yep this is kind of working it doesn't look correct i need to add some more styling but it's actually loading okay so let's check this out what i'm missing here so let's add another so many lips here um, this is the container okay so need, we need to add the the post sorry the comments so this will be inside this div so let, let's add another wrapper this will be a flex container flex row pattern three and this one we have uh, another deep wrapper for the image here will be the image of the user I will just use this some random image here. Should be the same styling, random full, inline, max with none. Let's make this another user. And next to that, we will have a, a div relative. so grow okay flex grow so this will basically make the element uh, grow as needed and in here we have uh, the comment okay so let me actually see this um, 
this user we have another uh, this is the username okay the username and the comment okay I was a little confused there so <coughs> excuse me so here we have a padding x for text small here we have a span tag font size medium margin right 2 and this one we have uh, the username and next to that uh, we will have the comment so that's some random comment here and below that or next to that have some icons should be absolute position this is for the the heart for the icon for the comment so this will be right zero top zero block floor right so this absolute position I don't need to float it right but let me see cursor pointer let's make this like it because we don't have any state right now so let's add that by default okay and inside this we have an icon so the icon should be uh, the heart but depending on on the state of the comment if it's like it or not should have something different here but for now let's keep it like like a regular icon like a solid icon and let's make it like that I think that should be enough let me see okay yeah okay I need to fix this position in here but I think it's because I don't have the other part of the component so now let's add the button of the page of the element uh, so we have okay so below this we have another div absolute position bottom will be zero with full border top background white and here we have another div uh, class header oh, this is nothing it's not it should be part in three flex flex row text uh, 2xl take the full width okay inside this div we have all the icons related to the post and the user so we have a uh, flex one and inside this container is where we have all the all the icons so i think we can just uh, reuse this code from here uh, so we have all the icons and 
let's remove this action here uh, okay I forgot close the zip maybe let me see this will be inside the zip and there's another dip here so there's there's two dips next to each other this is for the bookmark okay let me check that out set is post model open is not defined yeah, let me turn about that again. Okay, so we can see the icons here. So now let's add the the input uh, for the comment. So that should go below this div should be a font medium for medium size text small uh, parent tree this will have the total likes so Let's put some random likes here. Next should be gray, 500, uh, uppercase, and the next three, text small, extra small. Working Y for the letter spacing, and this will basically have a date, something like that. And finally, is the pose is the the box for the comment. This will be a flex container. border top inside this uh, make this another flex container and center the items vertically we have an anchor tag text to excel and this will have an icon will be um, a regular so we need to pass the two props the far and face smile this will be a smiley face and next to that we have another dip should be flex one, padding right three, and padding y one. And here we have the input text. Should take full width. Padding x three, padding y one. Text should be small and it should be outline zero. So we have that. Uh, out that border <coughs> excuse me in the element this wheel of type text and let's add a placeholder mm -hmm. that says add a comment and I forgot something off here forgot to close this tag 
and below this we have another div flex item center text small and this will be just for the post uh, link this will be text sky 500 font medium and this will say just post so let's check this out looks good so now we need to fix this okay so here we have a we have the div for the user and the other div so what i'm missing here is another wrapper this will be to absolute position the these elements at the top so this will be top zero with four parent three flex flex row and border bottom and these two elements should be inside this so they go to the top and this should fix it okay so we could add more comments here but um, basically once we have the graphql endpoint we will load more comments Alrighty, so now let's work on the login page. So let's create a new page called uh, login. And let's just generate some skeleton. So we call login. And this won't have any like login actually functionality so because we need to have the graphql endpoint but we will do that later when i have just the basic uh, html quote unquote so let's remove this and for this page we want to have um, we want to have some state, so let's add some state here. Oops, state. Import your state. Um, we want to have a constant here for the email, and should be an empty string, so we don't have any warning we have another oops i don't know what i this usually happens set um, for the password so set the password and we want to have something for the errors so this will be set error should be empty so let's create the dips we first up a wrapper that will take uh, uh, the horizontal um, the height will be full screen background will be gray 50 this will be a flex container but we know it will be with the column directions so the direction will be fr uh, from the top to the bottom not like a row and justify center and item center so everything is center 
and inside this we have another flex container that will be a flex column and here we have a a div for the for the image we have a a little image here this image of the iphone so this one this will be one div and the other one will be the form so for this one we want to have uh, some padding right. This will be um, this will be hidden on mobile and will be visible on on desktop. So on medium breakpoint basically. So let's use that image width will be um, 300 and iPhone and the source will be images iPhone Instagram the PNG I already copied that file into the repo into the project so it should be on the repos if you when you want when you want to get it uh, this will be another div and in this div is where we have the actual form so this will be a white back, background white should have a border color gray 300 width will be 80 padding top will be 10 padding bottom will be 60 this will be a flex container items will be center uh, vertically and this will be uh, column direction margin bottom tree we will be relative so we can absolute position something inside okay and inside this we have first the the logo the instagram logo so this will be images logo instagram and this will be logo instagram and the width will be 200 pixels inside this we will have a form element and the class name will have a margin top 8 a width of 64 this will be flex flex column direction and inside this we have uh, the input fields so we have a first input field with the text extra small with full margin bottom two it will be rounded corners border some border background will be gray 100 and the border will be gray 300 but in x2 but in y2 the focus um, of line none so we don't get the default default outline by the browser we want to have a focus of border uh, gray 
I think this will this will break the metal to complete. Let me see what I can do. Outline. Uh, when it's acting down. So let's actually remove this. And this. So we can auto complete this. Forgot one, I think. Oh, this one. Okay, so now I need to go back and change this to column, column, and column. And this will be a type text. And the value will be the email variable that we already defined. And this will have a placeholder. We'll say phone number, username, or email. We don't, we don't have a way to log in by phone number uh, or username for now, but let's make it similar to to uh, Instagram. So let's save this. And the other, the other input field is very similar. But let me see. Actually, do it. Uh, let's add that password. This will say just password. The placeholder. Uh, the classes will be the same. I will add just an auto focus here so we get the focus on load or render and below this we have a button with the text small center background blue 300 text white putting white one have rounded corners and fonts in medium and this will say log in and we have something else and uh, we have a little div for the errors so this will be a a small text center text will be red will be absolute position uh, to the bottom of the of the div and the party next will be eight should be hidden by default but i will basically show it so we can see the message i will copy this and the last element is um, sort of um, bl block here this will be background white have a border rate 300 text center width will be 80 padding y will be 4 and this is where we have a link to create an account this will be a span with the text small you will say don't have an account and below that we will have an anchor tag with text blue 500 text small font size me uh, semi bold and oh forgot to add some margin left one 
and the same course cursor pointer and here it will say sign up okay so let's see how we can show this page on the pay on the app so let's import that page here from pages login and we want to have another route for the login page this will go to accounts login and this will load the the login component obviously we don't need the navbar in that case so just the login and that should do it let me check this out so let's go to accounts login okay so we can see this um the path to the logo is incorrect and but yeah it looks very similar to the other one and the box here we have the input and the message so once we have some kind of basic validation we will show this message and hide it for now let's keep it like that um let me see what i did wrong here okay i didn't add the extension so let me see this is um this is an svg so now it looks better but i think it looks bigger yeah so this should be a typo so typo here okay now it looks better so we now have a login page that we can connect later with the graphql endpoint so that's great and this page is responsive if we go to mobile we can see that the left part disappears so we only have the form and we can get the image when we go to the medium breakpoints and up so around 1024 i think no 760 767 768 or something like that okay so now we can work on the the last page before we uh, start working on the graphql endpoint endpoints uh, so that will be the edit profile page okay so let's create a new component it will be a new page it, this will this one will be called profile edit and let's create a skeleton here profile edit um, this component we have some state so let's import uh, use state and um, we will have some state variables for the different uh, form uh, inputs uh, the first one will be the name of the user this will be for no excuse me this will be empty by default use state other one will be for the username this will be an empty string we want to have something else for the 
for the uh, bio. So this will be bio. And this will be also an empty string. Another one for the website. And another one for um, the email. And the last one will be for the form. And I think that's all for the variables. Let's create the HTML here. So let's create this uh, little fragment wrapper. Inside this, we will have a, a dip. We a flex container of type flex row. And inside this element, we will have uh, two, diff two dips. So on this particular page, let me log in here again. Uh, what is that here? So we have a little navigation sidebar here at the left, and the form will be at the right. Okay. So on the left side, um, let me see. We will have um, uh, so actually the first part is the is the right side. So let me see. In this uh, flex row container, we will have another dip. This will be for the um, for the image. So this will be one third, part in three. Here we'll have an image. Will be floating right, margin right five, and inside this we'll have a the the user image this will be class name rounded full here and the path to the user let's get that from this and let's paste that here Maybe something random and here we can add another div for the username. So this will be an H1, text will be 2XL, this will be a user. Here we have an anchor tag, text x small, sky 500, font will be bold, and this will be a link to change profile photo. And next to that, we will have another div flex container so we flex row margin top five items center 
Inside this day we will have uh, this one for another add it for the name. So this will be one third. I will add the slash later. Flex row placed uh, the content at the end. Align center, put in right eight. So that's add the slash. So it's one third. This one we have a label with uh, margin zero. Padding zero, align baseline, font bold. This will be a top flex and align center. Okay. So this will say name. This will be basically the label. And now let's create the div for the uh, the input field. This will be two thirds. Margin top ten. Let's add the slash. And inside this we have an input field, some border, part in one. But in X3 window width will be full. So we'll type text. Placeholder will be name. And uh, I think that's it. Oh, we are have a value that will be the name. And below that uh, input we have a P tag with text gray 400 text extra small and this is just like a hint text so this will say I will just copy this in the final code so we have now the help text here Let's create a new route. This will be um, an accounts, and in the inside the accounts, we'll have different sort of pages. So we have this edit. This one is for the password, and another one for the help. But I don't have any one any help page, so it will be just these two. So for this, we have to create this. Um, this nested route. So let's delete this. So we will have uh, the accounts, and the accounts we run, we load, uh, we load the settings page, which uh, we don't have right now. But let's create the tax here so it will be this and this and this will be called settings so we need to create a new page called settings okay account settings and inside this route we should have the other routes nested and we want to have a route for the edit page so this one will be the the index page the first page and here we want to uh, use a uh, function called navigate from react DOM so let's add that here so this will basically uh, send the user to that particular page 
and when I use that here, navigate to the edit page and replace. And this is basically to make the user go to the edit page if the user just go to a slash accounts. So it will be like a redirection to the edit uh, edit page basically or to open the edit um, page on the right side. And the replace is to not uh, add that to the history. Okay, so let's add the actual route for the edit page. And this will be pat um, edit. And the element that we will render will be the profile edit page. This one. And let me see if I'm missing something. Uh, we actually don't need this and ending tag and we I don't know if we imported this no so we need to import this page from pages profile edit and that should be it for this page. Oh, we need to create the, the settings page. So let's go to pages and add a new page called settings. Let's open this page. Let's create a skeleton uh, component settings. Save this and check this out. Can <coughs> excuse me, settings edit. Uh, Okay, so let's go to the settings. Here we need to import some components from React Router. We need the, the link. We need something called outlet and use location. So the outlet is, is what we will uh, use to render whatever is passed to to the element to in the route uh, as the element. So let's we'll see that in a moment. So first, let's create a div for this flex container. Background white. The mean height will be eighty. Vertical width. But uh, let's do it like this. Uh, vertical width, 80. And inside this, we have another div for uh, border R, border right. And is for the left, the left uh, navigation sidebar. So this will be the right. Inside this, we have some ULs, and one is a link, and this link we have some class names. Uh, this will actually be a string literal, so let's add that. This will be a block, cursor, pointer, padding for 
Shall you need the cursor pointer, but let's do it like that. Uh, put in X eight and if we have a a path name me equal to uh, counts edit wanna show some different font size so this will be bold so this is basically to make it active so this will be ball border will be border left will be two border left will be black and if it's another route we don't add anything there and this link will be to the edit page so one clicks on that and here it will say edit okay edit profile actually and we need to add the the location so this will be use location and this is basically coming from uh, the react dom so we can get the in this variable we can get the the path name so we we know the url that the user was using so the path name will be a structure from the location and we will use that here and this is the edit page and below this we have the other div this will be a, a width three quarters and the padding will be 10 slash and this is where we will output uh, the other element the outlet Okay, so path name, path name. Missing something now. Okay, let me see that on the browser. So it kind of looks like I'm missing some kind of wrapper here. So let me see. Okay, so what I'm missing is uh, a container. So let's copy this from the profile page and put it right here. So this should have a container, so it's center and have a max width. So now it looks correct. We have the, the input here, the sidebar is center in this element so much better okay so now we need to add the state so let's continue with that form let's go to the profile edit here this will call the set name so on change we will call the set name function and here we pass the event object and here you will be a event target dot value and that should be it for the name so we can start typing something now we can do the others um, they are pretty similar so I will just copy and paste copy and paste this um, the next one will be the username 
um, username will be username change want to change the username and there's no hint text here so that should be it for the username let's add another one for the website is we reach uh, website 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 oh the placeholder is also it's actually different uh, my website.com and this one will be username check that out on the browser so it looks correct and let's add another one for the bio this will be bio and this will be a uh, text area and we don't have a type here this will have three rows placeholder will be nothing i think and the value will be bio and on change we want to change the bio um, border same everything is the same and we have an, a text area and the last one or the last two actually the email and the phone number so email this will be email and this will be email and next the phone number this will be phone number this will be just phone and this will be just phone okay from email and phone number but the placeholder is phone number alrighty and the last thing will be the um, the, the submit the button the button here so we flex row um, should not have anything this and here we should have the button will be background sky 500 text white font semi bold padding y1 padding x2 around it text extra small and this will say oh actually to a uh, disabled positive 50 and this will be of type submit and that's it for now we know we don't have like a submit uh, function for now so let's add the submit text here 
and check this out yeah it looks good phone number okay i think this is pretty much ready for the graphql integration oh but ne we need to add the password form yeah so let's create that uh, that new page so that will be called password and inside this or no inside the pages This one will be called uh, actually change password. And let's create a skeleton change password. And let's add that to the to these links here on the app. Where is that? here so we want to import the password change packs password so we change password and uh, this will be a child uh, route here I think this says change password or just password uh, just password and this will be the change password component like that okay so we want to have a, another element here in the settings um, this will be pretty much the same as the other but the difference will be here this is password should be active and this will say change password and uh, that's pretty much it I think this should go oh this should go to the password page and let's check this out so yeah it's loading the other element the other page so we can now work on the change password so the the uh, HTML is actually pretty similar to the profile edit so I will just copy some part of it this will be a fragment let's delete this part and uh, this will have this and this will be um, this will say password and this will have any hint text and the next one will be confirm password um, but let's delete this thing here should say just password and the other one will say uh, confirm password and the placeholder will be confirm save this check this out in the browser so I think I need to fix this part here
Oh, I, yeah, I think it's my profile image is actually bigger in the in this in the in this code than the final code. So let me see. Probably missing some width. Um, so here we can say width 40 pixels and this should do it with 40 okay with 40 with 40 yeah looks better so i think this is pretty much done oh actually we need to add the the bottom so I guess we can use the same code from the profile edit this will say uh, change password and the other margin top three that's probably it I think so let's check this out change password okay that looks good so I think we're ready for the back end part so let so I will see you in the next section Okay, so now we will create our GraphQL API. So if you are not interested in, in the backend part of the app, we you can basically uh, skip this part and go directly to the Apollo client implementation. But if you are interested in, in PHP and Laravel and how to create a GraphQL API with Laravel, you should uh, basically follow this section. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to install uh, Laravel. For that, we will use uh, Docker. So we will use Sail, which is the tool that Laravel provides to, to basically use Docker. Uh, so let's create a new app here. I will call this server. So this will be the name of the app and let's run this inside the same repo so i use server because in the final code i'm using backend so if you look at the repo uh, it will say backend so just something to keep in mind so this will take some time so i will basically fast forward the video okay so once this is done should be able to see the into the server and round sale up so there's something um, there's an alias that you want to create if you don't have the alias already um, this is for this vendor sale app let me show you i think there's some sample here okay it's here so if you want to create a, an alias or you don't have to always type this path vendor bin sale uh, you can do this from here all right so let's go back to the terminal let's run sale up this should start all the containers So once this is done, we can go to localhost and we should see the default Laravel page here. So we already have Laravel running. So next, um, we need a few things. Let me see. So we need to run um, artisan migrate. So let's do that. Okay, so let's run sale artisan migrate. So we run the all the migrations, the initial migration. So this will create basically the 
users table and some other tables that are used by Laravel. This is for the authentication that is used uh, by Sanctum. So we are now have that uh, those tables. Let's add the other package we will need, which is Lighthouse. So Lighthouse is the package that uh, let us basically handle all the GraphQL implementation. So this will simplify the all the different uh, things that we need, like creating the schema, the, the mutations, the queries, all the stuff. So let's add that here. Okay, so once this is done, we should be able to publish the schema. Something important when you are using sale is that you don't uh, you, you, you should replace this PHP with sale. So you basically run the command in the host computer. Okay, so we should have now a GraphQL folder with the schema like this. Let's actually open that in the okay and as we can see the package create these um, example queries and some uh, basic type for the user table so we are basically ready we can now um, do something else we need to um, we need to change we need to change the config so we will run this command to publish the the config file so let me see we can go to the config lighthouse and here we want to use sanctum for the authentication instead of the api guard so that's because uh, we want to use tokens for authenticating the users so we will have to use that in the in the config um, and another really useful tool that we need is the laravel graphql playground so this tool is basically the ui so you can run queries and start testing your your mutations and your queries so let's run this command and let's go to the url here should we look Playground, we can run commands or write queries on the left side, and we press this play. We press this play icon and just see the results from the endpoint here. So we already have one little or two, basically two queries here. So let's try that. Here we can basically find a user by ID or email. So let's try that. The user ID will be one. And we're gonna get the the user, the ID and the name. Just that two things. Uh, we don't have any users right now. So this will return null. So the next thing we want to do is to see the database. So we get users and some more data. So let's create a new migration so we can update the users table. So this will be sale artisan, make migration, update users table, and the table will be the users. Right, so we have a migration here. 
So here we can start adding the new fields that we will need. By default, the, my, the query, the user table doesn't have username or doesn't have a bio. So we need to add all those fields. Okay, so first let's add the username after the ID. Next, we want to field for the image. And another one for the bio. This will be uh, a text field after the image. And we want to have another string for the website. And the last one will be the phone after website here is where we uh, add the when we want to uh, roll back the migration so we basically just drop the columns so we drop each of the columns from the app method image bio, website, and form. Okay, so we now have this migration ready. Now we can now run this migration if we run sail artisan migrate. And it's failing. because let me see and the find method string oh this is not this this is table so this replace with table not tables just table okay let's try again Okay, now we have our migration. Now we need to add some uh, data to the table. So let's update the factory. Let's go to the editor, user factories. And here we have some more fields, so let's add the username. We want to have a this dot faker and username. So we just create a random username. I'm not sure if I can use this uh, silo facade here. Let's try that. Username, bio. This will be just text. Website. This will be a URL. Form. This will be a phone number. Uh, we want an image. And this will come from the random dub user. So I will just copy some code here. So I don't have to type all that stuff. So basically, this will randomize 
the woman and man string here and we'll basically get one of a random number from 1 to 50 for the images to get some random users images from that API and uh, what else I think that's all we need here so let's run the C there see if it works okay let's try let's check out the database and let's try to get something from users but there's nothing there oh actually let's create the uh, let's update the seeder because right now it's not doing anything so here in the seeder when I use the app models user and here you want to call the factory method this will be want to create 50 users and we run create okay so this will basically create 50 users so now this should work if we run the seeder so let's see the database okay so now we should have something so now we have 50 users here We can see we have some random bio, random websites, all the stuff. Check out that on uh, Playground. So now we can get some data from the from the database from the users. Username, what? Oh, because I don't have that in the schema. Okay so now we can start um, updating the schema so let's go to the browser and let's clean this up a little bit uh, i don't need these comments so we need another field here for the username Another one for the bio. And another string for the image. And then the website. And then the phone. Email, email verify it out, create it out so now the schema should be updated so we can query the username the bio and the form okay so now we can get this data because it's in the schema we will need uh, four different more models we will need something for saving the post something for saving the post comments uh, another table for the uh, user followers and the last one should be the likes we want a table for saving the when someone likes a post so it will be called post likes so let's start generating those classes 
you can check out this documentation so for generating classes we can use the artisan command to generate a model and we can actually generate some more uh, classes that we will need the factory the seed uh, not a controller because we won't use a controller so let's start with the posts so we will call sale artisan make model it will be called post when I generate a migration and a factory and a seed class so let's open the factory file for the post and here we want to populate the caption and um, let me check something this fake okay so we can use this facade fake um, text 300 characters and the image can be images uh, post.jpg okay so now we should be able to uh, update the seeder oh no we need to actually update the user and we should add the relationship to the post so here we have public function post and if i can open this bracket return this has many so it will be a one-to-many relationship with the post class and we have to import the, the post maybe i can use autocomplete no um app models posts so now we have a relationship with the user and let's do the same on the post but this will be user and belongs to user and here we have app models user okay let's save this so now we can use the relationship in this header so we can use uh, so we can do has post one and this will create one post per user and it will be related to that user so we can now run sale artisan migrate and we want to refresh the database so we just recreate all the migrations all the tables and we want to see the database again so we now have, should have uh, some posts here we have some oops uh, oh i forgot that we need to actually 
edit the the seeder the database seeder so here let's clean this up and here we should call all the seeders we want to call so uh, we want to call the user seeder and we want to call oh we only have one for now let's use um, sorry in the same folder so we don't have to import them okay seems that the, there's an issue here call is call Okay, so now let's try again. Uh, user see they're running. User post undefined. Uh, okay, so this one should be should be plural. Should be post has post, that's the, the name of the relationship, so let's try again um, the caption column, okay, so we need to update the post and we need to add some fields so we can uh, basically update the fi those fields protected uh, fillable uh, we need to add the user ID we need to add the caption and we need to add the image so we have all those three fields let's run this again so we should be able to update those unknown column caption post so maybe I forgot to um, what is the migration? Oh, I didn't create it, the migration, updated the migration. Create post table. Yeah, that's the issue. So I need another field here. Should be. Um, text should be called caption and and we need a table foreign key this will be to the user ID table and we want to make it constrained Add the table string that will be an image. So that's for the image. I think that's all we need. So we can now run this again. So we have the correct fields. Now we have the fields created. So I think that's should have post. Okay, so now we have some posts for each user. Okay. Okay, so now let's create the posts uh, comment table. So we can add comments to posts. Uh, this will be a post comment model. This will create a migration, a factory, and a seeder class okay so let's open the post comment here So this one will be 
we need a protected uh, variable here called fillable so we can update those uh, fields here we need to update the user id the post id and the actual comment and this table or this model have a relationship to the to the user so it belongs to a user belongs to a user class and i think we need another to the post So now let's update the post command, uh, the factory first. So So we need a uh, user ID and this will be a random user ID. So we will just call uh, the old method to get all the records and random randomly pick one and get the ID from that one and do something similar for the post ID and for the comment we just want to add some uh, random comment, random string a text 300 so this should do it um, we need to import the app uh, models user and post okay so that should do it for the comment the post comment and for the post comment see there and uh, we want to create like uh, 500 comments so let's run the factory method and this count will be 500 so we have some a bunch of comments here and this will create the comments and I believe we need to use the import this here comment and I think I forgot something yeah this one should be like that okay so now we have the comments either so now we should update the database see there here so we load this post comments either we call that uh, post comment see there unexpected because I need a comma okay so let's run this again the fresh the migration uh, column not found user ID in post comments so I believe I forgot to update the migration post comment yeah I forgot to update the migration so read the post comments table here so this one will also have a foreign key to the user ID so we can just reuse this and to the post ID 
and finally we want to have a comment that will be a text field so it should be like that and that should be it so now we should have the fields in the database and a post and we have post comments some random comments okay so those three are ready those two are ready uh, let's do um, post likes so we need to generate this these classes here post like model with all the other classes and i will do the migration here so i don't forget so let's do the migration post likes and this one is very similar to the comments basically relationship to the user and the post and we actually don't need anything else so let's do the post uh, factory and here we want to add some random id for the user So random, we pick the ID, same for the post, and we want to use app models post and user. Okay, so this looks good. This is good. And finally, the post like seeder. We want to, uh, yeah, we want to import the model. And this will be a post like. and post like we call the factory method and we want to create 500 likes and we want to yeah call the create method at the end and let's so now we can run the migrations again and should populate the post likes table uh, from post like and we got a few records so that's done so now we can uh, create the other factory uh, the other model sorry the user follower so let's just run this and let's open up that migration in the browser in the editor uh, migrations why is opening this uh, user followers table and for the user followers and uh, we can use uh, something like this we will need a foreign key to the user and another for uh, the follower ID so this one should be users 
this is to create the foreign key relationship. So basically, um, Laravel uses the, this name to try to find the table. Since it's the user table, we have to explicitly say that here because we already have a user ID uh, relationship or foreign key. Okay, so we need to update the user, follower, model, uh, same protected, fillable. So for the user ID and we want to update the follower ID. And we have a relationship to the user. So this one belongs to user. And should be fine like this. Okay. Uh, we need to also update the user follower factory. So here we want to generate a random user ID. So this will be random and we want to get the ID and follower ID we do the same and we need to add the use here models user and finally the seeder for the seeder we want to just generate 500 uh, user follow uh, follow yeah 500 user followers so let's just copy this and this will be user follower and use app models user follower and this should do it let's check out the let's run uh, let's run migrate again oh we actually need to add uh, the the seeder to the database seeder here so let's do that uh, user follower seeder and let's try again okay so now we should have user followers so yeah we have some records here okay so let's add some more relationships that we are missing here so the post has many uh, post uh, comments and post likes post like so we need another relationship here for the uh, the comments instead of belongs to it will be a one to many to the post comment and we need another one for the likes we call just likes and this will be post like has you will have many post likes alrighty and let me see if I'm missing something here 
on the user we have posts we have followers as many uh, user follower and this will be the followers and we also want to know the following the people that we are following or the users we are following so this will be a one to many but in this case for the join we will use the follower id of the table uh, of the user follower table uh, will be matched with the id of the user table okay so we need to add the um, post comment and post like even though it's on the same folder oh it's user follower user follower okay so this should be all for the user and for the post comment we already have the relationships here so i think we are ready to start updating the schema where is the schema here so a user can have many posts this will be an array of posts and it will be this means that is required so you will need to return uh, at least one post and has many this is required and this is required okay we also need the total posts so here we we use a uh, account directive so all these directives are in the documentation but basically we just we will just use this uh, the, the one for the relationships and this one for the counting but there are so many more so you can go and check out the documentation uh, we also want to count the followers this is basically the name of the relationship followers posts and this one is for following and this should be following okay so we now need to uh, we can actually now query this I believe uh, let me see want to return posts let me go to playground um, let's see if we can get posts and here let's get an id okay so we actually need to define the post type so let's define the post type and this we have an ID um, a user ID so when you want to define an ID in the schema you usually use this ID instead of using int or something else and this will basically be a string will be mandatory an image oops keep making that same mistake uh, the likes will be a count directive here the relation 
will be likes created uh, time ago will be just string created at the date time updated at will be date time user will be just the user uh, is the relationship so we use belongs to comments will be the relationship to the comments so this will return a post comment type that we will need to define in a moment and it has many and post likes it will be a type post like and has many so we need to define another type for post like this will be an id a user id and a post id created at and updated at as daytime and the post comment which is pretty similar but with a comment string uh, is like it it's an integer and we will use uh, the relationship to the post so it belongs to and the relationship to the user via user and that's it for the post comment okay so i think now we should be able to use this okay so now we can get the post uh, the post have a caption so yeah we can get that um, the post has likes I think so how many likes we have four likes okay so this uh, it looks like is is working the relationships and the schema okay so now let's start creating mutations so the first uh, thing I want to show you here is that if we had this uh, guard directive we basically could not query anything from this uh, user query because it will basically say that uh, we are unauthenticated, so we can't uh, access that information so in that case is where we want to be uh, logged into the system so let me actually show you some more directives so like lighthouse comes with many different directives you can see the api reference here and see all the different directives we won't be using uh, all of these just a few but in this case, we're gonna use the guard. We have used uh, this has many for the relationships and uh, some others. But <clears throat> for now, let's start working on the mutation. So the first thing we wanna do is to create the, the mutation. Here in the documentation, we can see uh, lighthouse comes with the uh, with a command so we can create a mutation so let's run that it's this one will be called login to add sale okay so the mutation it's created so let's open that mutation 
And here we basically need to implement the resolver for that particular mutation. And uh, the resolver is basically the, the code that we run when we call this function. So let's go to the schema and create a new type. With this will be type mutation. And here we want to create a mutation called login. This will have two uh, parameters, two arguments, um, the password, the email, and the password. And this will be required. And this will return a string from the, after we run this function, so let's say this. Now we have to create a mutation. This will match the name of the, the resolver we just created, the mutation. Uh, so let me go to that file. And here we will use our user model. And the first thing we want to do is to find the user by user uh, by email. So we run this query. Need to find the user, the arguments. We will get the email for the user, and we will find the first uh, match for that email. And if we don't find that user or the, um, the password doesn't match, so we match, try to match the password with the one that is on the database, which is obviously encrypted. We uh, and we need to add this hash here. Let's see if I can autocomplete. Yeah. Okay, so we have the facade. So if we can't find a match, we basically throw a validation exception um, from illuminate. And the message will be for the email, and it will be uh, the provided credentials are incorrect. Okay. And if we actually find a match, we create a token for that user. And we can call this anything we want. And it should be a plain text token. So when we create a token, we just return that token. So we can use it in the app. All right, so let's try this in Playground. So let's use, uh, so this will be a mutation. And here we will call login and we will pass the email and I will try to find an email from the database in a, in a moment. The password will be password. So let's find an email from the database. Um, where is the email? Here. So let's use that, click here, 
and we are authenticated we now we now have a token and now that we have a token we need to actually pass that token for every request we need to pass the authorization header here so this will be authorization and we add this bidder and next the token in a, a string so now every time we do a query actually it's actually uh, okay we can test this one and update the schema let's add the guard directive and it says that I'm authenticated oh because I removed the the, the beer okay let's add that again authorization and beer and the token okay so you basically authenticated uh, the request and we can find we could find the 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 data for this query okay so now let's start creating the other mutations we need another mutation for uh, for the likes so let's create a new one for likes and let's open the file here here we will use the app models uh, post like and inside this one we'll basically check if we have a user and if we don't have a user we just throw an exception runtime exception current user not found okay and if we find the 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 user we basically create a new post like with a post ID that will come from the arguments and the user ID will be the authenticated user so it will be user ID okay so we don't have this facade and now we I think this is ready now let's go to the mutation and let's add that to the schema so we will need a post ID that will be an ID and this will return a post like and we want to guard this uh, this mutation so only authenticated users can call this okay so let's try that here let's create a new tab mutation and this will be like the post ID will be one and after 
that we we can get some data from the post like so we can use this to get the id some of this here it's not needed and i think this should be fine by getting this error uh, this is fine so yeah i'm getting the post like id that we just created which is 501 so this is working because i'm authenticated so likes are working now let's create another one which is the unlike so let's open this file and can reuse some of this code when I use the facade and this check and here we also want to use the same model so if First, we want to find the post like record. So let's do post like where user ID is the same authenticated user and the post ID is the post that comes from the arguments. and we want to get the first match and then if the post like is found we want to delete that post like so this will delete the record and we just return delete it here and if not we return return not deleted okay so let's now update the schema and this will be unlike and it will return just a string Okay, so now let's try that here. Let's create a new tab. This will be a like. And let's remove this because we don't want to get any data. And we get the response, it will be deleted. Okay, so let's continue with the, the follow. So we can follow people. This will be follow um, the model will be user follower and we wanna use the same snippet for the checking the if the user is found is here okay and um, finally we'll we will create the user follower record with the user ID and the follower ID so we are following the user that comes from the arguments oh excuse me now we are following 
actually we're following the user that comes from the arguments and we add the user that is authenticated as the follower ID okay so let's update the schema to follow someone we need to pass the user ID and we will create a user follower record so let's check out this in the browser will be similar to the like so this will be follow and the user will be uh, can be user one maybe two because I think I'm one so user follower oh, okay so user follower is not here in the types um, so let's add that type here will be uh, this will have an ID the user ID the follower ID uh, created and updated at timestamps and you will be you will belong to a user so belongs to a user okay so now we have the type and now we can get the the follower the follow uh, the user follower record so okay so now we can create the next mutation which is the unfollow Let's go to the editor. Let's open up this file. It's very similar to the unlike. So let's see. We can reuse some of this code. So instead of post like this is user follower and uh, want to match that by follower ID and user ID will be the user that comes from the arguments and this will be uh, Instead of post like, it should be user, no, user follower. Okay, user follower, delete, delete. Okay. So let's see, we need to add that to the schema. Should be something like this but we we'll return a string and check that out on the here on playground some follow pass the user and we want to unfollow the user too and it basically unfollow with that user so it's working fine if we try that again couldn't find the couldn't find the record so so this is fine so next let's create the add comment mutation and 
content this one will allow us to add comments to posts so here we want to use the app models post comment and this out facade and we want to do the same check here and return a uh, post comment record so we want uh, want to add the ID the post ID that comes as an argument the user ID will be the authenticated user ID and the comment will come as an argument so we are done with this we can now create the mutation in the schema so this will be add comment we pass the post id and we passed uh, we pass a comment which is a string and we get a post comment so now we can test this in the playground ui add comment to post id one and the comment will be nice post and we get an id so i created the comment so this is working fine uh, so let's continue with another mutation this one it's is for updating the user when we, this one will be used on the profile edit profile page so this will call will be called update user update user can reuse some of this code um, this one will be user okay so actually we can just get the user from the session and if we found the user we can just update that record based on the arguments that we get from the from the API and we just return that user record so let's update this schema so here um, as an argument we have a bunch of parameters we have the name which is a string uh, we have a username we have a bio we have a website phone an email and I forgot so we can use some uh, validation here so if we want to add some validations uh, Laravel validation rules to this particular field we can use this directive and this will basically apply the URL validation to make sure that this is a valid URL and we can do something similar to validate this as an email oh I need to use double quotes here in the schema in the schema that's really important 
Uh, but I'm getting a different. Oh, okay, I need to return something. So I need to return the user, and this will be a guard, a guarded uh, endpoint or mutation. Okay, so now we can actually update our user data. So let's try this one here. Update user. Uh, let's change, uh, let's say, the bio. Maybe the name. So let's make this Carlos. And we're going to get the updated record. So let's run this. Username. So we just updated the name and we get the other information. So this looks correct. Let's say we want to update the username too. Let's run this. And it doesn't work. Uh, let me see. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, it's not updating the username. Uh, maybe I forgot something. So let's go to the user model and we actually don't have a lot of fields in the fillable uh, array, so we need to add the username, email, image, bio, website, phone and that's all so if we don't have any if we had a uh, fuel in this fill level then we are uh, able to basically do this uh, updates and creates and all that stuff if, if we don't basically laravel will ignore any change on those fields so as we can see now we have the by update the username updated so this is working fine. All right. So now let's generate the add post mutation. So we can upload files and post files. And this one will be um, this one will require um, something to upload files. Right now on Playground, we can't really do that kind of testing. We can't upload files here. But we will add that later uh, when we work on the UI from the React application. But for now, we need to add this scalar to uh, the schema. So let's add that here below this other one. And uh, that way we can use this in this particular type of the file. So let's, uh, let's add that mutation. Uh, it will be called add post. And we want to pass a post ID and we want to pass a file of type file. Excuse me, of type uh, upload. And this will return a post and this will be guarded. So yeah, this color is upload. Okay, in the file, 
the resolver uh, we will have this uh, same check for the user So we will check if the user is there. Uh, here we get the file as an argument. And if we get that file, we will uh, copy that file to a public folder. Like this. So we can read that uh, image later. And we will return the post. We'll create a new post. Here we pass the user ID. And this will be the user ID. We need a caption. This will come uh, as an argument, so actually I forgot to add that to the to the mutation. And finally the image. This will be the path to the image. So when we pass the object here, this will basically uh, use one of those magic methods to create to convert this to a string with the path. And uh, let me see, I forgot to add this semicolon here. I need to use app models post and this schema should have a caption that is a string. Okay, so I just realized this is not, uh, we, we don't have to pass the post ID because we are actually creating a new record. So we, we just need to pass the caption. And I think this part is fine. We are passing the caption as an argument and using the upload here. So this is fine. So we can't really text uh, test this in playground so I will leave it like that we will implement that later when we uh, used Apollo client so let me see so let now let's now work on the queries let's remove all these queries from here so here we can add some queries that we will use um, the me that is usually to get the current user authenticated so we can add that one we will use that one for the profile i believe so let me check that uh, this will be just a query so let's add this as me without any argument and we will we will get the user with all this information so this is fine uh, we also need another one for um, for getting the uh, the posts this this for just for i think it's for testing but this will basically get all the posts in the database uh, we need another one to get the uh, a post based on the ID and uh, actually it should be equal and we will return the post We will use the find directive. So you find that uh, particular record based on the ID. 
So as we are using uh, the Laravel default directives, we don't need to create uh, query, query resolvers for this. But for the nest ones, we actually need to do that. So let's say we want to get the suggestions. These are the users that are suggested on this right sidebar uh, in the in the profile or in the home page, I think. So we want to get some users from this uh, query. So let's generate that query. Here, instead of mutation, we will say query. And this will be called suggestions. OK, so let's open this on the browser. On the editor, excuse me. We want to use two models, the app models user and user follower and the out facade and here we will check if the user is found as usual and we want to find users so we will do this query So we want to find uh, users that are we are basically not following. So we, here we use a word not in, and here we use a subquery to get the users that we are actually following. So this will be user ID where follower ID equals the current authenticated user and we want to get uh, only five five uh, users to recommend so let's use take five okay and this this looks good let's add that to the oh it's already there let's see if this works here this will be a query and we actually don't need the posts from that user just this basic information so we get five users and that we are not following but uh, I think this is including myself so we probably can improve that query but this is just for uh, just basically getting some data doesn't need to be perfect we have now a suggestions query We need another query for the fit, and this we return a post, and let's create that one. This will be called fit. same check here let's copy this code from the other one and if we find if we, we need to return a group of posts so let me see uh, where 
user ID is different than the current user so we don't get uh, our own posts and we just get some random posts so this is not like any fancy algorithm to get some posts from the database but we can obviously improve this if we want to do something more like a, a real fit so here we're just getting 10 posts that are not mine okay the out is there we need to use app models post okay so let's check this out so we will get the fit in this case we get a knee id let's get a caption and we get some posts from the database so this is fine okay and the last query we want to create is the stories so this is for the the little um, component that is on top of the home page let's open this on the editor and here we will use uh, the user app models user and user follower actually copy this user follower and the same out and here we will do the same check and we will return uh, a group of users so we're in ID so the users uh, should be users that I'm actually following or the user is following the authenticated user so select user id where follower id equals the user that is authenticated and we will get uh, 15 uh, stories or 15 users so this should do it so now we can add that to the schema this will be uh, stories and this will return users check this out and like this and this will be stories so we get a few users so this this looks fine we are actually missing another mutation and that's the the logout mutation because we don't have a way to log out so let's go to the logout and here we want to use this facade 
and we want to get the user and here if we find if we find a user we want to get all the tokens could have one or, or more so we want to make sure we delete all of them and we just returned uh, log out as a string and we need to add that to these notations this doesn't have any argument and it will return a string and it will be guarded obviously so let's check this out on the browser on playground uh, let me see login mutation uh, let's uh, I don't have any space for another one oops no so let's actually replace this one this will be log out I don't need to pass anything so I think I can do it like this so now I log out if I try to like something I'm not authenticated so even if I send this token it's now invalid so yeah I think that's all for the backend part um, this basically will give us everything we need to start implementing implementing the front-end part the, uh, the Apollo client uh, uh, components to to get some data from the api so i see you in the next section thanks okay so now that we have a nice grabql api we can start installing uh, apollo client so let's do that this is for uh, the client all the packages that we need to consume the api this is for parsing grabql and we will also use another package that we need for uploading the files which is not supported by default uh, by Apollo client so we need to install that one and we will also need some code to basically store the token and pass the authorization header to all the requests so we can just grab this code from here and move it here so this will basically just uh, get a token from the local storage if we have one and just pass it to the headers for for the request Okay, but we also need so to import the Apollo client packages we will need this one and we will also need to create the upload link so we can just get this code from the final code we want to use that and here we are basically importing uh, all the all the components from Apollo client this is used here the set context is used here to get the to add the authorization header and this is to create the upload link which is finally used here to create the the final URL and that will be used by the client so here we are creating a new instance of Apollo, of Apollo client and we concatenate the outlink, the one with the authorization header and the one with the upload link. And we also have this in-memory cache object that is used obviously for caching by uh, Apollo client. So when Apollo client um, finds that a query is stored locally, it basically doesn't trigger another request to get that data basically if the data it, if the data doesn't change uh, it doesn't trigger a new request 
and that's all we need here uh, but before we can start consuming the app consuming the endpoint we need another thing uh, yeah, basically the endpoint needs to be uh, while listed in the grab queue in the laravel config because otherwise we'll get a course error so we need to add the grabql path here in this file and that's all we need here so we can close this and we are ready okay so first let's add some login functionality so we can get the token and update uh, or token in the local storage and don't have any issues accessing the other endpoints Okay, so first let's create a new folder inside the SRC. There, this will be called GrabQL. Uh, GrabQL. And inside this folder is where we want to store all the different um, queries and mutations. So the first one will be called login dot js and let's open this file here we need to import uql from apollo client and let me see we also need to define a constant will be called login and this will be the gql function and here inside this function which is a attack function as basically this function takes a string literal and here is where we have the mutation so we can pass login mutation and this mutation takes two parameters this st a string for the email and a password which is a string too and here we basically call the the same mutation we have on the grabql endpoint which is login and here we just pass the two uh, parameters the password the email and password so it's a kind of weird syntax because you have to kind of duplicate this but that's how it is and we finally export this constant and now we can import this in the login page so let's open the login page and in the login page we can do this import login from um, grabql and file is login uh, here we also will be using the use query um, hook this comes from Apollo client oh excuse me it's not a use query it's use mutation because this is a mutation and here um, we use we implement the use mutation hook this returns a function that is the one we use to send the variables and here we just pass the the constant with the GPL GQL code and here we take wow. this but in this function we actually want to pass the variables so we have the email and we have the password which are here in the in this state variables and we also need to define a function to handle the submit 
So this function will be called um, on form submit. So we can just run this prevent default so we don't actually refresh the page. And we can here in a try catch uh, call the mutation, which will be await login. If we use the async await syntax, but we need to add that sync here. So here we call the function with the variables that are here. And we should get a uh, a token so we want to store that token inside the local storage so we will call this token as it is on the uh, on the index.jx and this will be login and finally we should redirect to the home page so we need to use another hook and this one is from react router done so here we should define navigate and we'll use the use navigate hook so now we can redirect to the home page we get this data here as a response so uh, now we need to add the add submit the handle submit function somewhere here so uh, on submit we want to use that function and let's remove this code here we also need to set the on change event here so this will be set email the target dot value and the same for the password the target dot value uh, we want to check something here so if we have an error we want to set the error here so let's do that instead of console.log we can just uh, copy this error here to make it cleaner and set the error here so if we have an error we can show this code and inside this we show the error so yeah, I think that's better. Thank you, Predator, for fixing this. And what else? What I'm missing here? Let's check it out on the browser. So I don't have the use state. Did I remove that? Use state. So let's just import use state from react oh it should be in quotes I think okay what else e is not defined login is not defined so I think I deleted something I'm not sure import from um, one dear app and login so we now have the login and the as handle submit suspecting uh, an event E is not defined oh here ok 
Okay, I forgot to pass the E variable. And let me see, we should get a user from the database. Uh, let me go into my SQL. Get one user. And let's let's use this one. And the password is password. And we actually need to change that. So let's change this type to password. And now it looks hidden. And now we can log in. So we should have a token now. So that's great. Okay, so let's start by implementing the GraphQL um, endpoints on the home page. So on the home page, we will need to get the feed uh, to get all these posts. And we also need to get the information for on the current user. So we can use the slash uh, me endpoint for that. So let's open the home. Um, home page. Um, here we will need to use uh, the use query hook. Let me see if I can auto import this use query for an Apollo client. Uh, we also need to create a new uh, query in the in the uh, GraphQL folder. So let's create that. This will be called uh, getfit.js. And the getfit is pretty similar to this. Let's just reuse some of this code. This will be getfit. And this will be getfit. But here it's not a mutation. So here, uh, this is a query, and we call the get fit function. But I will get some data from uh, from the final code uh, because basically it's all the stuff that we need. And save this. We can now import that from here. So now the autocomplex works, that's fine. And we need to uh, get the query. So we need to use some state variables that come with Apollo client. Uh, Apollo clients returns and the use query hook returns loading error and data. So we need to pass here the get fit. And yeah, basically this one is when the query is loading. So we check the state. Um, this one is there's an error, obviously, and the data that comes from that call. And we need to do a few checks here. So if the page, if the query is loading, we basically don't, don't want to continue with the execution we just want to um, basically stop here so this will say loading if there's an error the same so this will return error so in a moment we'll create a spinner here so this looks better um, so let's replace this code here. This will be data.fit.map. And we will get some posts. And if we get some posts, we need to render this post component. So let's save this. We want to pass the post here. 
and some other props in a moment so let's see if we have some errors this is says loading and it looks like there's an error so let's check it out now it looks like we are getting data from the feed so let's see okay so actually if it's loading we need to return the loading if there's an error we need to return the error not the opposite okay so we are getting data now from the feed so we need to up update this component to show that data so let's open the post js file and here we should get some props so let's destructure that uh, we're gonna pass a lot of data as a prop so let me go to the post to the home page here and pass on more data so here we want to pass the the key so we don't have any issues with rendering we want to pass the id um, the current user id that we will get in a moment for now let's just put one uh, we want to have a caption post of caption we want to have uh, the image from the post we want the username the user image that comes from the user and this one also comes from the user and the post likes this is the total of likes and we need to define this attribute in the model which is to show the uh, the human readable time ago date and this is for the comments and the last one is for the likes so this will be post post likes so let's go to the model in php and in here we oh we already have it so so here what we need is to delete this likes relationship because um, we may have conflicts with the likes count in the schema because here we have likes so to prevent that we better have just uh, the post like relationship so we, I think this is ready so we now need to update the post component to get all these props so here we will need the id the current user id the image the caption username user image the likes created time ago uh, with the comments and the post likes and we have the post there so that's fine let's save this and so now we can pass this to uh, the component so first let's replace this so the user image 
and this is the username check it out we got a user different users yeah we have got a different user and username so that's great um, so this part I will leave it like this because uh, when we upload files this will be totally different so let's keep it like that for now and what else okay so we need to update this here these are the likes username here we have a caption this is the time ago created time ago and i think that's pretty much it Let's see so we now have a caption here the likes um, we still need to change uh, the code here so we get the the correct status for the like so it should be read only when it's like it so but first let's create another um, another query for getting the current user so let's go to GraphQL let's type get current user.js so here is where we get all the info from the user current authenticated user so let's copy some of this code and just replace some names here get current user and inside this you can just delete all this here and i will paste the code from the final query I will paste the code from the final codes because it's a lot of stuff so it doesn't make any sense to type all that so this will get the current user so let's import that okay so now we have the query we can use the use query to get that so we need to rename this loading current user so we don't have collision with the other um, this will be as error current user and data can be data current user Okay, so now we should be able to get the current user and we can pass it here uh, data current user dot me because that's the name of the query and ID okay now we should be getting this we need to also do this check here so we don't get any error loading current user or error current user okay that looks good so what else we need here so let's check it out so let's reload we have an error so let's see uh, we don't have call to undefined metal legs okay so that's on the laravel model so we need to update the schema 
this is post likes so is that's the name of the relationship now and now it's working all right so now we can start updating this state here for the heart so let's go to the post and i will create a helper class here so let's create a new file actually this will be in the source and it will be called helpers.js so i will just get this from the final code and basically um, there's four functions one is to get the the image url based on the the image that is stored in the database so we need to get some kind of um, search and replace to get the cor the, cor the correct uh, path this is because laravel basically adds this to the file name so just a little minor thing we will see later uh, this is for signing out but the one that we need here is the is like by user so but basically does here is loop through the post likes and check if there's one of this if one of these post likes belong to the user we are passing here so if that's if there's a match basically it means that the user the user has like uh, that particular post so now that we have the the function there we can import that here and update this code here oh so actually we need to define another function here i will call this like it or like it i don't know what's the right pronunciation and the here we call the function we pass the current user id and the post likes and let's go to where the heart is so it should be here so let's replace this with a uh, with backticks uh, go inside let's move this to the backticks and here we need to check if the pods if the post is like we actually want to make it red but if it's not we want to add a hover to make it gray 500 so it's gray on hover and we also need to change the icon here because it should be filled when it's red but it should be solid when it's not so let's add this here so if it's like then it should be solid if it's not it should be a regular icon and we also need to pass the name of the icon which is this one so that should be it for this part let me see okay so it looks like it's working we still need to add the the mutation to uh, to like and unlike but I think that's working now okay so below this date we also want to show up some comments so let's check if we have some comments we want to um, basically check if the comment 
we have more than three comments. We want to show this little section right here, which is basically to show uh, only three comments uh, per post. So it's a little feature that uh, we see on Instagram to not show basically a list of all the comments. So we just show a little uh, slice of those. So let's try to do something like that. Uh, we need a, a link here. So this will be grade 500. It will make more sense once we see it. So in a moment text will be a small and the cursor will be pointer and we want to have some uh, function here because we want to see all the all the uh, comments but in a model with the post so let's actually define this uh, even if we don't have this function or this model, but I don't want to forget to add that. And here we need to close this anchor tag and it will say view all. And this will be the count of the comments. And here it will say comments. So now we need to define this uh, state variable. Oh, it's actually here. Okay, cool. So uh, we actually have the the variable there. And I'm missing something. Yes. So if we don't have uh, the maximum, if we don't have comments more than three, we just that we just don't show anything. Uh, comment is not defined, of course, because it's comments. So let's see if there's a post. Yeah, this one has more than three, so it shows this little link. I think all of them have more than three, so we won't see uh, the other case. But that looks good. So below this, we want to show all the comments. So if, if we have comments, then we want to loop through those comments. But fears, we just slice the first tree. And we map we map this so we can loop through all the comments and we need to get the the comment and the index and we want to return a div with the comment um, this will be uh, so has, we'll be added with some padding and text will be a small uh, okay so depending on the index have some other options so let me add that change surrounding with back ticks and if, uh, if the index is different than zero, we add some padding top. It's basically to add some spacing, that's all. And if we don't, we add space. Uh, I think it was because of that space, no. Okay, so because I have this ternary operator, so the comments. Uh, so let me actually finish this so to get rid of that error. 
and let's continue with the comments um, inside this div we want to have the username on size medium uh, the comment user the username uh, we want to have the comment itself and we're gonna have an anchor tag for um, the likes so this will be a float anchor tag to the right that's for liking the comment and this will be cursor pointer and let's see here we have a font awesome icon and it will be a heart so let's add uh, if the comment is like it should be a, a solid icon if not it should be a regular and the icon is a heart not a heart, a heart and let's close this up and save and I actually mix missed uh, something so let's change this uh, let's add some back ticks and if is like if comment is like we wanna show text red 50 or 6 600 actually and if not we just don't do anything so let's check this out let's see if we have comments yeah we have comments here so that's great i think we need some spacing um here so yeah this looks much better Okay, so now we can add functionality to post a comment. Okay, so next let's add some mutations so we can like an unlike post. So first let's create another file in the GraphQL folder. This one will be like okay so for the like and get some of this code and replace this with like and do the same here and this will be a like mutation and the like will take uh, the post ID so this will be an ID and here this will be like and this will be post ID and the variable will be post ID and we want to get the user id from that record and the post id okay so let's say that so we can now import that like file here we want to use uh, the use mutation so let's import use mutation 
and here or maybe here let's create a new constant this will be called like this will use the use mutation and we use that file okay so now we need to create another function so we can use that so this will be called like post this will be an async await function so let's do that and this will be in a try catch so now we can say response response equals await like and we need to pass some variables and here we pass the id and we also need to do something else here we need to fetch the query again to get the fit so we get the updated um, records for the likes so we call uh, we pass this property called refetch queries and inside this uh, we pass the query that we want to refetch which is the get fit query so it was uh, uh, imported thank you uh, like post uh, we actually want to no the id is here so that's fine okay so now we can like a post if we go to the hearts section which is this one um, comment heart okay so here on click We want to check if the post uh, if the yeah if the post is like we actually want to call unlike but if not we want to call like okay so but I think we need to use this as a function and let's create the unlike okay so the unlike is pretty similar to the like so let's create that file in the grabql folder this will be called unlike we can copy some code from the other one just make it a like and this will be a like it will take the same parameters but once we unlike we we'll, we will delete the post the record so we don't need to get anything here so let's see if we need to import a like and get the mutation here and this uh, this uh, function will be pretty similar so here instead of uh, like we will call unlike we refresh the queries so we get the fit uh, let's say this so now we should be able to call the mutation 
here and like like check it out uh, this one is like uh, it, nothing happened I think so let's see post ID of required type ID was not provided okay so the post ID let me see if I'm not sending this in the payload okay variable post ID okay I see the issue so I'm calling the mutation but not the other function so this should be unlike post and this should be like post all right check it out okay now it's working so we can like okay so we can't unlike let's see not deleted let's actually try with this one it's probably a data issue not deleted okay so i think um if it's like we call a like if like like it I don't know the right pronunciation but let me know in the comments if you are a native English speaker so I was the, the issue was that I was missing the D here okay so let's see if it's working now yeah it's working now okay that's great okay so now we need to be able to add comments so so let's create a new graphql mutation this one will be called add comment and let's open that file okay so let's reuse some of this code this will be at comment at comment and this will be at comment and the comment takes a string and should, re should call this at comment mutation from the schema and this will be comment and comment but once we call that function should get some data and let me copy this from the final code basically some data from the comment so now let's import add comment here sometimes just doesn't work okay so now it's working and the const will be at comment and we want to use the mutation called at comment and now we need to create another function similar to these two this will be create comment so we don't have a collision with the at comment function and this will be the actual at comment here we pass the comment 
and we refresh the get feed to uh, let's see and now we need to make sure we have a stay variable for the comment I don't think so yeah we don't have one so let's create a new state variable let me do this real quick comment set comment um, on change we want to set comment with the value from the input field okay so we also want to fix something here the post id needs to be passed so we can add a comment to a particular post and here this will be post id and in this function we want to pass the post id which is the id and we also want to create a new state variable and this one will be to show a spinner when we are adding a comment so here we can set loading oh not here sorry in the comment set loading to true and once this is finished we called uh, set loading false and in here we want to add a spinner so i will just grab that particular code from here to save some time because this video is like 10 hours long so now we have a spinner if, if this is loading and we want to disable the input if we are submitting and we also want to add a uh, on click event here and this will basically call the create comment function and i'm missing something in line 77 and it's a comma okay so this creates the comment async okay i think that's ready to be tested uh, let me see if this works okay we got the we got the comment here i didn't see the spinner but we got the comment at least so let me see what i'm missing here uh the spinning um it's loading so i think this looks good maybe it's because it's so fast that we can see the the spinner loading so let's see what I, what else we can do here just a little detail here for the uh, the class in the anchor tag so just basically if we have a comment uh, we actually want to show a, a different color for the for the blue for the post uh, just something very subtle and let's see if this link is working yeah we are getting the post that looks very nice so we also actually need to update the data for for this model so let's do that right now let's see we are passing a model somewhere here 
and we need to pass the the post data and the current user ID which is current user ID okay let's open this modal post component and here now we should get the post and the current user ID so now we have some data to start updating this uh, I will keep the image like that but we can replace this user image she should be post.user.image and this should be post.user.username here should be the same post.user.image this is the username here we have the caption and here these are actually the comments so we need to replace this with real comments from the database so let's look through those comments real quick post comments map and we get the comment we get the indexed and we should be able to move this inside and start changing the code here so we need a key for rendering correctly uh, with the id here we need the user image uh, from the user that made that post well, we also want to have the username and the actual comment and here we want to change this uh, because if the comment is like we have a uh, different icon so if comment is like it or like and I don't know how to pronounce that this is fast and this is a regular and this is hard and something very similar here uh, let's move it to the back ticks and we want to make the red based on the disliked so if it's like we want to get this utility class if not we don't want to put anything and uh, here at the bottom we will need to know if uh, the user has liked that post so we do something similar as we did on the home page but i will just um, try to get that code real quick 
So let me see, what is that code? Uh, I think it's here. Or maybe it's in the post. Um, is liked. So let's copy this and and this current user we have it the post likes uh, the post likes come from the posts so we have those and that's all we need from that so here uh, basically we need to add the same it's like so let's copy this code from here uh, to here takes 500 over I think this this should work and let's see like post is not defined okay so I think we can just remove this action um, check here let's keep it like that for time's sake but you could like so you could actually do that if you want to it's basically the same code we have a bunch of comments uh, we need to also update these stats here so this will be the post dot likes and this will be the post dot created was created time ago yeah created time ago uh, the smiley i want that functionality to add comments here because this will be uh, like a 20 hour video if i start doing everything but so far we can see that the model is working it looks very similar to the one in instagram okay so now let's work on the navbar which is the one that has the uh the ad pose model and that navbar is kind of complex so let's do that because that will have the the option to drag and drop the files so let's open this navbar file we can start by replacing this with the one that we have on the helpers so a little bit of refactoring and we should be uh, using a, a new uh, so we need a new file from the queries from the mutations so let's create that it will be called at post.js and let's open that file so we can now copy some date some of the code from the others let's use this one and let's go to the uh, post let's paste this here this will be at post at post at post uh, we need the the caption which is a string uh, we need the post ID no we don't need the post ID because we are creating a new post 
we need the file which will be of type upload and here we call the mutation at post should be caption and this will be file and here we just can get some of the results from the record from the posts record caption and the image um, I sh sometimes we really don't need this so but anyway we can just get some of the data from the record if we need to and let's go to the navbar so now we can import the at post from um, GraphQL. This is the same. No, from GraphQL um, at post. So now we need to use a mutation. So let's. Uh, let's import that. This mutation from an Apollo client. So now we can define the function. This will be at post. And this will be the use mutation. And here we have the at post. So let's say this. Okay, so but before we actually can use this mutation, we need the, the model. So let's import that and create the actual the model. The actual model. So let's do this. Let's close this up. And let's pass some props to the model. And this will take a title, create new post. We need a state variable for um, for the uh, the open and close state. So let's use state. And this will be called uh, is new post model open. We need to import use state. And here we pass that variable. This new model is new post model open. And we also pass the function set is new is new model post opened um, we also need to pass some more props for the file but for now let's do this because we need to add another package for the drag and drop so this will be a flex flex column items center justify center height will be full and this will have a font awesome icon this will be to show a little icon in the center this will be a photo film icon class name will be a huge one so it will be 7xl and let's change this to back ticks and we have a condition oh actually 
we need to have the other state variable from the drag and drop so let's keep it like that for now um, we need to have a title this will be padding y3 text will be 2xl the font will be light and this will say drag photos and videos here and last here we have a button it will be with a blue background um, hover VG blue 700 uh, that breaks the auto completion text white small font bold padding y2 padding x4 rounded and margin top 2 this will say select from computer and um, let's add the column here alrighty so I need to add a fragment let's see yeah. oops close this fragment here okay so now we need a way to open that model so let's go to the square plus icon and then click we want to call a function we want to call the open new post model and we will create that function in a second let's define this here open new post model and this function for now just we'll just open the model and let me see if I'm missing something I think I think it should work now let me see if I get some kind of weird error so it's a blank screen so something is broken right now so this estate should be false by default and that fixed the issue so now let's click here and let's check it out the key prop and there must be something else for red transition show false okay so I actually forgot to pass the the value here same kind of the same error as before Okay, so now we have the model. It says create new pose, drag and drop, and be uh, drag photos and views here. So we can actually drag something here, or we can use this uh, button. So let's close this up. Uh, that we are refresh is because the close in the model is basically has this anchor tags we will fix that later 
Okay, so now I think we are ready to add the drag and drop functionality. So for that, we will use uh, the React drop some package, which is this one. So let's add that real quick. And let's go back to the editor and import um, use dropsum from React dropsum. And we need to add some more functions here. So this one, let's copy this let's actually copy this from here so we use the same code we have on the final code and we need to add some uh, function to, to pass some props to the the container where we will drag and drop so is this one and we also need to add an input field for the files should be here that will be basically hidden and let me see is file we need to add something else to check if uh, the file is, is dropped. So let me add a function here. This will be called is file drop. And this will basically return if there's any file in the uh, file state variable which we just need to create in a moment so this will be use state this will be file let's initialize that with an empty array so now we can use that variable here it's file drop and we can move this block here if something was if something is not drop we want to show this but if something is drop we want to do something else okay so this is actually a function and let me see if I can save this uh, unexpected token. So I'm missing something here, Mobile. Let me see, just adding some random thing. Okay, so that fixed the issue. But basically here we can just show uh, the first file. If we have something and let me see what I'm missing. Let's check it out. So on drop doesn't exist. Okay, so we need to define that. And this is a this is basically the callback for checking when something is dropped, which is this here. So let's define this here. And 
that should get rid of the error and we need to import use callback from react and we're still getting some error here um, not bar okay so there are no files it's probably that uh, file does ah, okay so have a typo that's why so now we don't get any errors so let's try this image and I think we got an error shall I have a key class name okay let me let me actually refresh and try again Key prop, so blah, blah. okay. So basically, we are dropping uh, some file, but there's nothing in, in this function right here. So we need to actually update our state variable, which is set files. Um, basically, uh, what I'm doing here is looping through these uh, files, the files that we get from the uh, from this use callback and just uh, create a, a, a URL based on that file so we can see a preview of that file so let me see now if we can get something okay so now we get the name of the file so Let me see if I can just uh, show the image here. Show the preview. So we can see the image here. So it's working. So now we can basically create this other component to show the the preview of the post so let's create a new component this one will be called post preview and let's generate some skeleton for this function this component post preview uh, we will need uh, to import font awesome and we should get some props from uh, the model need to get the files the user the caption and have handle caption change actually just these two okay this will come from the structure in the props uh, if we don't have files we don't want to show anything uh, if not, you want to show um, this component here. Um, flex, and we have a, another div inside this. It'll be three quarters overflow hidden so we don't show anything extra there and this will be 
slash and we have another for the other side and inside the first one we're gonna show the file so I will just copy some code here for to speed up this because uh, it's taking so much time to complete this video and this is basically just typing some code so here we have a candle caption change so we need to create those state variables uh, this will be one for the caption an empty string and let's create the, hung the function okay handle caption change should be it uh, this will be set caption e dot target dot value so we get a value there uh, let's see if this change somehow no okay because we are not actually using this preview here so let's change this to post preview and import that component from post preview okay so let's check this out we need to import the use state in the post preview and let's check it out we got an error so we are okay so we need to pass the, the files uh, Post preview we need to pass the props, the files, and what was the other thing? The user. And the user comes from post user, I think. No. Should be okay. Where is the user? okay actually we need to get the user here um, this is the the current uh, authenticated user so let's keep let's keep it like this for now let's add uh, another query so let's import get current user here and let's call that uh, here so this will be loading this will be error this will be data do you use query get current user so now we should check like in the other uh, components so let's copy that from here to save some time typing that so this is loading we get that so now we should get the user from the get user get current user the, let's parse it here and 
let's check it out. This square is not defined, of course. Import use query. Uh, use wrap song is called conditionally. What? Okay. Should be, yeah. All the hooks should be at the top of the component and let me see where I'm getting those warnings okay we are gone okay so we are we don't have any error now let's try it again and let's see what's going on here uh, your square is not defined. Let me see if I need to refresh. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. I don't see any error here. So let me see, post preview files. I'm passing the files, right? And oh, the check should be like this. We don't have files, we don't want to continue. I think, yeah. So we can see now this is showing up the post. Sorry, the yeah, the, the file and the information right here. So just a little change. So it doesn't look that weird. We need to pass the size of the model. So when the when there's a file drop, we want to show a bigger model. So let's pass this LG here and MD here. Okay. So let me see. That looks better. Okay, so we have a caption now, we can enter text. So the next step is to hook uh, hook up the, the mutations. So we have a, we wanna create that post. So let me see, did we already create that uh, mutation? Um, we add the, the Okay, so we need to create the function. The function will be called uh, share. So this will basically send the mutation. Uh, this will call the mutation at post. And here we wanna save, send some variables. Basically the caption and the file. Uh, I don't know why it does that. Uh, okay, so the caption and the file. We will only send the first file. You can basically send more than one with the drag and drop uh, plugin uh, component. But for now, to keep things simple, we just wanna handle one. Refresh queries, and here we want to get the current user again, so we can get the all the posts and all the all the information from the user. Um, so navbar, we need a comma, and what else? So we actually need to pass the share function here so we can 
enable the sharing bot button in the model so now we have a share so let's check it out caption is not defined uh, return we have some state for caption but we don't what is the input field oh that's on the preview yeah that's on the preview so we want to pass that state variable to the post preview and here oh that's what i did so i basically added that here so we can basically move that or just use yeah just let's use that from here uh, set caption and here we're calling the set caption and caption comes from the other component so let me see so we need to move that to the other component sorry for that um, i don't know why i changed that so caption and this will be empty and here we can send that caption and this is broken so i did a mess with that this file drop is not a function it's file drop Okay, so I need to pass. I need to pass the is file drop function to the model. That's why I'm getting that error. Okay, so let's check it out. One more time. So I get the share here but I need to fix the position so where is the model so let me see what I'm missing here absolute right 5 maybe this is the should change this position here top See, let me actually inspect what's going on here. So this is absolute to the top. Oh, I have a, a typo here, that's why. Okay, so now this looks better. So I can made a comment no I can't so let me go back to the nav bar preview post caption I need to pass the set caption to the post preview here I'm getting the set caption. So yeah, I can share maybe. Let's see. Network. Does the me? Okay, so we have a file here, and we have a so we have a record basically so what i need is to close the model when the user uh, 
also create the post. So let me go to the navbar. So once the post is done, we should close the model and we should redirect to the profile page. So this will be data.me.username and I think this should be an async await function and I think that's it. Oh, I need to create the navigate uh, use navigate hook navigate here is your navigate that uh, should work let's try to upload another one Okay, and we got an error. Set caption is not a function. File drop is not a function. Is that fault? Yeah, it's the redirect. So basically, it's because I have a six hundred instead of six thousand. That's all. Okay, but we are getting records. We are up, be, we are able to upload files, so that's great. Okay, so now let's update this profile page. First, let's start with the header, and then we will continue with this post, uh, so we can get real data. So let's go to the profile header. Here we need to import the get current user query and we need use query from follow client here we need to structure the loading error data from use query get current user uh, we do the usual checks so it's loading return loading um, we can change this layer to a spinner so it looks better if we have an error we just return error and so now we should get some data from these users the current user um here we want to use that user image so let's see we have an image here uh, user is not defined because it's actually data.me so now we get uh, an image from the graphql endpoint so let's update this uh, username here. Oops, username. Um, what else is hard coded? This uh, total post. So this will be data dot me dot total post. Let me check this out. Yep, that looks fine. This will be total followers. And this will be total following. And here we have the name. Um, this will be data.me.name. 
this part right here is the caption the caption excuse me this is not caption this is bio and we want to wrap this in a div because we want to have uh, white space uh, spaces and new lines so let's move this code right here so it's correctly formatted um, this is the link to the website and here the same website okay so now we should get all this info from the endpoint so that looks good um, we have this uh, okay so now we can update the profile posts should be pretty much same for the user, so we can just get this code here. Okay. And we can just start updating these values here. Data.me dot total post. Uh, this is total oops. Uh, total post uh, the other one is not total post the other one is followers are following so this is followers total followers and this is following uh, data the me total following okay so that's for the this uh, account that shows when you are on mobile this one so let's say this so let me make sure that is that it looks like it's working so what else we need to update here we need to get the posts so for that can just loop through the, the post from the user so this will be data.me.post and we can map that post let's move a component here and you should see now less less posts yeah we have four uh, we need to pass some different props um, so basically we want to pass the image and we want to pass the show current post that's um, for the model that you have on the profile on the on the image and you click on the image so this will be show current post and we pass the post object so I think that should be it so we need to define show current post so Comes show current post should take the post and it should set the current post variable but let's actually find that state variable uh, here use state uh, current post well, it's actually yeah, so current post and should be null by default 
And here show current post, pass the post, and set post modal open for the modal should be true and we need to import that model here import model from model and define the state variable that's called uh, is is post model open and that should be uh, false by default and here we need to show the model so this will be model post sometimes the, the autocomplete doesn't work so let's just delete this part here and create this stack so now we can pass uh, actually we can close this tag here and pass some props the open prop so to open and close the model the set open to update the state variable and we want to pass the post the current post all right so now we need to have some way to open that model that should be in the profile post component okay so here we're actually getting the image and the current post so we are uh, i think we should get okay use stay profile post forgot to import use state use uh, state let me see model is not used set post model open is not defined okay so this is actually is and it should be post model post not just model and uh, from components so yeah this should be chose more more post and more post oh i actually already did that so let's just delete that and suppose it's not true set is post model open to true we got an error Okay, so the issue is that if I don't have a post, it should not show up the model. So I need to check that here and just not show anything if there's no post. So let's refresh post post and actually let's do it like this because uh, the post is used here if there's no post just return okay so now we got rid of the error and we can load the post so that's great so now we can basically show the real image so for that we need to import the get image url from helpers and here we can just delete this and call the function just pass the image so it should be broken right now because we haven't really published the the path so here we can see it's trying to find the image in a storage images post that's where uh, laravel is actually putting the file 
but we we haven't created the sim link for that so let's run one command here let's go to our backend code and, and here we need to run sale artisan storage link so we have that sim link so this will basically uh, create a sim link from this folder to the public storage in the public is where we can access the files from the um, from the http server so now let's see if we can get some image uh, still doesn't work let me see open in oh because post the jpeg no that's not the right image let me see um post image so basically it's because i'm uh, this particular post doesn't have the right uh, uh, image data so let me see if we can get something from the latest one the ones we uploaded so this should be now in the storage folder so let's actually update the post set image equals to this so basically all the images have this all the posts will have this image and let's refresh here and now we can see the image is coming from the GraphQL endpoint and is correctly formatted. And the path is storage. Okay. So this is great. So when okay, so now let's continue with the profile edit page. But first let's add a link here to that page so let's make this a link as a button and it should link to the accounts edit page and this will be a link tag so now we can go to the profile edit page and start getting some real data so let's open the profile edit page on um, this page we will need to get the current user uh, we will need the use query obviously um, what happened here okay so we got that uh, we need to do the same checks we do always do so let me see if, if I can check if I can get that from here so we need to check if it's loading um, we also need to update this code right here so let's start changing this this is the current user so it will be data.me.image and i think i'm missing oh i'm missing the use query here um oh, this will be a const and we will get uh, loading um, error data from use query and get current user so now we should have that data there and we can see the image is updated here uh, we also need the username and what else we have here 
and this is just the form so we are updating the name the username the website the bio okay so oh but we are not showing the value yeah okay so now we can we need a query to update a uh, mutation to update the um, the information so let's create that mutation this will be update user uh, this will be use mutation and here we will have the update user mutation that we need to create in a moment uh, let's import update user from uh, let's copy this from here at the user and yeah, let's create that file real quick uh, this will be update user let's open up this file and I will just copy this code to save some time this will basically send the, all the information for the user and get the some basic information from the record okay so we have the update user and something that we want to do here is to when we get the data from that user we want to update the state variables the the name the user and the bio so so let me actually get that code here and we now have the mutation so we can now create a function to update the user and this function will be a submit function and inside the submit we want to do all the stuff so we want to check if we have some data in the fields it actually if the user actually enters something um, we just throw an error um, okay so let's actually do something first let's create the toast uh, let's create a toast message but first we need to install the the library so we will use react toastify to show these toast messages so let's install this package real quick let's make sure to go back to the front end part and install react toastify And, and once we have uh, the function, the package, we can just import this function. And now we can show the error. So let's see, let's copy this. We want to show a little toast message error there. And next, we want to call the actual mutation so this will be an await call to the update user mutation and we want to pass all these variables in the form so we have the name the username the bio the website the email the phone and if we have a, a success uh, from that we just call the success function with the little message 
update it and we can have another state variable for to know when the query is updated when the request is being updated so we can just call this loading uh, false and here we want to call set updating to fall to true sorry and once this is done we want to call this to false okay so i think we are good to go here but we need to actually oh this is not updated this is uh this is loading set loading and we need to call that uh, submit function and we need to update this button here so on click we want to call the function and we also want to disable uh, when it's updating oh actually it was updating not uh, loading my mistake updating updating yeah because we we have a conflict with the loading variable then and this is updating and updating alrighty so we should now be able to send that form let me see okay so now we have some real data that was updated with the query and let me see if we can send something uh, we got some kind of error okay so the issue was basically that i didn't save this file so we didn't have any mutation and uh, but we also are missing the toast container so we need to finish this setup uh, because we don't have this container so let's quickly add that to the app so we can see the those messages so you want to add this to your main app let's save this and uh, let's try again okay so we want to add some props to the toast container should be at the bottom center and we are getting some weird things here oh and we also need to import the styles forgot to import the styles for that okay so now we can try again and we got the message and let's see if we don't pass a name we got the error you forgot to write your name username or email so i think that's great we are good to go now with this form we won't implement this other one because it's basically um, it's very similar to this one um, i think you can do that yourself and what else we need to do here so let's do a little more improvements we can um, we need to actually do something when the user lands in a page that requires authentication and so we'll we will add a little redirect for that so let's create a new component it will be called um, uh, protected route 
let's open this file I will grab this code from the final call but it's basically if you don't have a token uh, you will be redirected to the login page so we need to implement this in all these uh, these elements here in the routes let me see if I can auto complete this okay so it was auto completed but the tag is wrong and this will be here and this one should be here We go to the home page and if we go to the user profile oops like this and we here we also want to make this a variable so we won't do anything with this for now but you basically will take any of the usernames that should be it so we have actually have a token so it should not matter right now it's basically when you are logged out so <clears throat> let's actually test that right now oh we actually need to fix that link there so we are in the home page and we are still in the home page so it's not working because we didn't so it didn't log out oh yeah we actually haven't implemented the logout in there i think let me see where is that should be in the basic profile yeah we don't have a logout here okay so let's actually do that um, we need to get the current user and we need to get the query And we need to call this here. Okay, so now we got some real data here. We can start updating this. Return a middle username. And this will be the, uh, the name. And this will be the image get uh, image URL. Oh no, this will be just the data that made up image. And here we need to import the sign out function from the helpers. So we need to pass some on click function here we need to add the client and the navigate function uh, the navigate yeah the navigate function so this will be use navigate and let's move this down let's call this here and we need the Apollo client So we are, I think we are good to go with the sign out. Logout is not defined, oh, because we need to define the function, the mutation. So let's do use mutation and let's do this logout use mutation 
this will be log out let's import log out from GraphQL log out and so we now have the mutation so let's create the mutation file let's do src components logout.js and this we just call the logout mutation pretty simple we already have everything there so I think it should be good right now okay so we are not ready redirected to the accounts login so that's great so the redirect is working alrighty so what else let me log in again select users from select uh, email from users limit one to get one email the password is password and now we are logging but we also need to update this particular image here and I think yeah we haven't really done this part so let's do those two things uh, the suggestions so let's import the query and the get suggestions and I will grab some code from the other final code because to, s to speed up this a bit and we should get some suggestions here so it's basically replacing this with something dynamic let's delete this code so we actually get some suggestions okay so we need one dip there and we will need to create the get suggestions so let's do that grab ql uh, get suggestions js this code basically just a query to the suggestions query and in here we need another component it's called the follow component so let's import that from uh, follow and let's create that file and okay so let me open that follow.js and again I will copy that code from the final code because it's basically what we have done already uh, we need actually need the spinner okay so now we got the spinner in the rip in the folder what else we're missing here uh, we got this loading user let me see if this is loading can resolve GraphQL follow okay so we don't have that uh, mutation so let's add this follow.js so we can follow people 
uh, the spinner is not defined okay let me see where is the spinner here components spinner save and suggestions not follow okay so And the suggestions spinner there follow I, I won't follow myself okay it's following following okay that's great we can follow people so the the unfollowing is pretty similar so I won't do that and let's do but it will be on the final code anyway uh, the nut bar it's missing uh, here. Oh, what is that? Here, I think. Yeah, this image is hard coded, so data.me dot image. That's the image from the database. No. Oh, now and save. Okay, so now we get the same image as here. So I think that's all for this project. Uh, in the final code, I will add the component for this. It's just a simple component to make this scrollable. That's all. If you have made it this far, please type Tailwind in the comments so I know you uh, watch the whole tutorial this was the the longest one I've done so make sure to like it and subscribe um, thanks for watching I see you on the next one